Welcome back to the REI Hot Seat digital version this week because I'm in sunny Florida and Jacob's still freezing back in Burlington, Ontario. But freezing, uh, freezing my buns off up here, man. <laughs> Thanks for doing this. Uh, today we've got uh, yet another interesting one. I think we've had a, a steady stream of interesting ones on the show. Tons of off-market stuff as Jake keeps bringing it. And this one, Jake and I both know the seller, the owner, and there's a bit of a story behind it because it was an old decrepit building, a legal fiveplex. And it was just too damaged to salvage. So we got an engineer's report. Like I did help out a little bit on this one. So I have, I have a bit more knowledge on it. We got an engineer's yes. report to say that it wasn't a viable building. It wasn't, it was not structurally sound. And we used that as leverage with the city to get them to approve a rebuild, which they really did not want to do. But ultimately what we ended up with is a building in a really cool area near water. So this building basically has a little bit of water view, depending on which angle you're looking from. And water view, but you know what? Yeah. Even better is is you're honestly seconds to the beach. Like you to can walk beach, out yeah. your door as yeah. a renter and go put yeah. your lawn chair on the sand and sit down and relax. So it's right. It's, yeah. It's so purpose location, built, I would yeah, say. Purpose built, you know, parking for all five units in an area where you really wouldn't find a fiveplex, it's more of family homes. So I think there's a, a ton of angles there that kind of potentially maybe, you know, make it worth more in the long run, maybe it'll rent for more in the long run. Yeah. Maybe it could have been an Airbnb play. However, as we know, the uh, which everyone should have expected is that Hamilton has regulated Airbnbs, just like Toronto did it many years back. It's going to keep happening in a lot of municipalities. So now that's no longer a viable play unless you do like midterm, right? I think you can go longer than 30 days. I'm, well, so to the best of my knowledge, Andrew Hamilton is going to allow Airbnbs. It just has to be your has personal to be owner, owner occupied. But I believe that there is some sort of restriction like it is with most municipalities that if you want to get out of that kind of regulation, you have to be longer than 30 days on your rentals. And then you're more into the Landlord Tenant Act at that point yeah. um, with the longer rents. Not legal advice. Mm -hmm. Everyone confirm that. Those those are just kind of the rumblings I hear in my understanding of the situation. So let's take a quick look at some of the numbers. We've been very efficient and already pieced together some of the numbers on this. A lot of these are estimates though, correct, Jake? Yeah. So we're working through finalizing numbers right now. Rents were not fully leased up, but the rents are, I would say, market rent, very accurate. And then the financial side of things, expenses, things like that. Most of those are educated estimates. So from comparable listings, in the area yeah. and from professionals in the field for taxes and things like that. It's as close as we're going to get it right now, Andrew, but yeah. over the next, let's say two weeks or a week here, we will fine tune and have a really good understanding of yeah. where this building sits. Yeah. So pretty reasonable estimates of market rent on these, you know, two beds and bachelor, a couple of one beds here. Basically it was replacing what was there. But the nice thing is that now these units have separate furnaces. So we've had separated gas uh, or a mini air split. conditioning as well. Yeah. Air conditioning in and they also have uh, separated electric. So a lot of really cool things. Obviously, that type of product is going to come at a price tag. You're going to pay a lot per unit for that type of thing, which obviously there's a certain type of investor that's looking for that. So in your mind, who do you think is the investor for a product like this? Yeah. Well, so right off the bat, Andrew, I was actually thinking more of a house hacker for this type of product. Because it's five units, you can look at it at mortgage. I've confirmed that MLI Select will work on this building. So CMHC commercial financing you can secure. So really it leaves you open with a number of options, right? Like I look at this and go, wow, it's an amazing building. So if I was in a position looking for a house hack and I wanted to take one of those two beds, well, then you have another four units there helping you pay your mortgage. And it's not like you're sacrificing the view or sacrificing the yeah. neighborhood to be living in a multifamily. You're actually in one, a premium neighborhood yeah. with an amazing water view right to the beach. So right. first thing that comes to mind is I go house hacker. I think it's a great deal for a house hacker. Second thing that comes to mind would be someone that's a long-term investor, right? Want, sees the value in that neighborhood, understands that it's a high-end neighborhood, understands it's close to the water and what that adds, and then comes in there and understands, hey, I'm going to pay a little but in the long term, this is going to appreciate more than others. And this is going to be a very solid project as well. It's brand new, a very low CapEx over the next mm -hmm. five to Nice. Okay. All right. So let's go through some of these uh, some these numbers. Like okay. So we've got 11150 for the total rent taxes, given a number 15,658. And I believe this was based on a tax consultant because taxes still need to be reassessed. Yeah. Insurance so taxes, Andrew, I'll just let you know. So we did use a tax consultant from Altus. We use them quite often. And for everybody, as a little tidbit. It's a great tool try to make a connection there, reach out. So many projects that we sell are brand new construction or have yet to be assessed, or even if it's resale and it's an older product, but you're saying, what are the taxes going to be in you know two, three, four years? Because the margins are tight. 
Well, you can get a tax consultant, pay them a fee, and they'll go through and basically let you know to the best of their ability where the taxes are going to land. And they'll also fight taxes for you, just throwing that out there. So if you want to do a reassessment yourself, I've had scenarios where these guys would come in and actually get your taxes lower based on a number of you know yeah. different reasons. Yeah, that's an interesting one. Like the fighting your tax assessment is, is something I've never done because I think that very strategically MPAC assesses low and municipalities just adjust their rate upwards. So they know it's very unlikely that they're ever going to be over assessed on your property. You know, they're never giving you money back. That's my feel. So it's interesting that you say that. So have you directly had any experience with a tax fight with them or that's just something they've mentioned that they do? No, I actually had a real life scenario in Burlington, actually. And I'm trying to, it was a while back. I'm trying to remember the numbers, but we got this specific tax consultant came in. Let's say, I think the numbers were, we were paying like 30,000 a year for taxes on something that it just didn't justify it because the previous use of the building would changed over the years. And my client was not using it for the same reason as the others. And the value of the building probably diminished because of that or decreased. So they went in and we ended up getting, I think the taxes ended up being something closer to like, you know, went from 30 to like 21,000. Like it was a big, a big win for that specific building. I'm not saying that's every case and you got to be careful with it because you don't want your taxes going up from a reassessment. So maybe have a chat with these types of people first before you open that file. Yeah. Be careful before you pick the fight. Yeah. And definitely talk to an expert, make that decision carefully because yeah, if you ask for a reassessment and I think you'd be kidding yourself to think that they hadn't set it all up strategically, you know, we underassess and they have high marginal tax rates according to their underassessed values. And that way no one ever, not no one, but rarely does it actually work out. So just be careful about it, but it's nice to know that that's an option. Okay. So yeah, let's don't go there and then call me afterwards saying Jacob yeah. made my taxes go up. So, okay. Yeah. Fair, fair warning. Yes, it is possible your taxes go up. So know that before you go in. Okay. So maintenance, I just got a 4% in here trying to cover for some of that CapEx down the road. Obviously there's not much to be done other than when a tenant leaves, you got to paint their apartment, hoping, you know, no time soon for roof, no time soon for any of the furnaces or any of the windows, anything like that. It's all brand new. And it's all on warranty, Andrew. I want to yeah. say that as well. So in our data package, we have all the warranties. So the furnace, the roof, the windows, I guess, yeah. which is a yeah. really nice thing for... Uh, yeah, you shouldn't be doing those furnaces for, what, in a worst case scenario, 15 years that, you know, hopefully longer. But I mean, the newer stuff doesn't last like the old stuff does. I was actually that I just sold in London, original furnace from 1986. They don't make them like that anymore. Anyways, okay. So management, we got it in here at 4% as well. I just, knowing the owners, they have an internal management team. So they're able to do that. Utilities, 2,500, just covering water and sewer Landscape and snow, this is a super small parcel of land. So 2000 should more than handle it. And then $5,000 miscellaneous. So Jake, you and I have no idea if this price is okay. We just kind of threw in a number that, you know, for discussion's sake, we both know that a property like this, there's a good chance that it could command way more than the dollars and cents can, you know, justify on a spreadsheet. And that's because of those intangibles that we've talked about. So 2.250, we put that in there for discussion's sake, a 4.3% cap rate. And it works for that DCR at 1.2 to 1. So Jake, what do we have to do to make that work? Well, I guess we don't need to go as we're assuming MLI select on this be a really prime candidate, as you had mentioned. So can we do 75% with that 40 year and 4.75? Jake, we just need one to one for the DCR, right? Or is it 1.1? Yeah, MLI select, this would be a perfect candidate for it because of the efficiency of it. Mm -hmm. uh, high efficiency furnace, windows, roof, like it's all new. So we're going to hit that target pretty easily. Maybe we got to update a water heater or two or a high efficiency toilet or low flush toilet, something like that. But yeah, we do need a one-to-one, -one, Andrew, is what the target is for this. Okay. So it appears that it would work one-to-one. -one. Here's an idea of the way it would work. You'd have a 25% down scenario, it looks like. We're just over one-to-one. -one. And keeping in mind, and you mentioned a point when we were off air, that CMHC has a couple of things they bake into their numbers. So just because we could, oh, undershoot, you mentioned. We could undershoot things, but doesn't mean they're not going to include it. So we want to leave a buffer there. You, know, you don't want to be pushing it or, you know, you say we're going low on maintenance and they're not okay with that. Like, what are they going to be? 750 a door or 600 a door? Something like this. Yeah. They range anywhere from about, like I've seen 650 all the way up to 850 a door, depending on yeah. the economic life of the building. And then Andrew, usually there's like yeah. a reserve fund for 2%, 1% yeah. to 2% in there. Just for miscellaneous. Um, yeah. Miscellaneous, right? So they have different mm. underwriting guidelines and yeah. this is a great candidate to say, you know, 
reach out to your mortgage broker and discuss what they're looking for. This is more for conversation purpose today, but if someone was interested saying, hey, I want this building, we'd connect with a mortgage broker from day one and craft the scenario together. Yeah. So something else to note here, it's not a huge cash flow play currently. And that's based on the current rents that we can show today. Of course, those were estimates. We know how fast rents have been going up. And at the end of the day, there's the intangible element to this building that it's located in such a great late location. It's purpose built, separate utilities. Obviously, it's going to command more and that might not necessarily make sense for every investor. But there are some that like the idea of the long term play on something like that. So you can make different assumptions. Like in the past, I always used 2%. When things were crazy for appreciation, I used 2%. When it was 10%, I was using 2 Right now, it's not at 2 But I might say, hey, as a long-term look, maybe I think 2 is possible. I don't have a crystal ball. So we're no, thinking- No, and, and Andrew, you and I yeah. see eye to eye on that. Like again, yeah. right? It might be zero or even negative for the next for year. Years, and then yeah. it might start going up yeah. by 1%, yeah. 2%, 5%. Yeah. I know- yeah standard for the past few years, it's been almost 5% Mm -hmm. as a baseline appreciation, but I'm doing the same thing as you, right? 2%. But then again, don't kill the deal over a fictitious 2% or 1% or 0% over the next year. If the bones of the deal work, Yeah. You know, let's look into it further. Don't overanalyze here with stuff like that. So here's my thought on this type of thing. Like, yes, down the road, you're likely to see, you know, get up to 4% again. And, you know, it'll affect your overall return. There's likely to be a year somewhere down the road, who knows how long in the future it could be more. Looking at it at 2%, obviously the area of improvement is cash flow. Getting those rents up more, we know the pressure that's been on rents, it's likely going to continue. So that number has potential to increase. When I look at these numbers, I think that this is probably the type of deal that works for somebody that, you know, they might be the type that put money in gold. They want to put money in something that holds value and has a lot of very tangible uses. And I think that this is kind of that qualifier. It's not the blow your socks off, blow you out of the water kind of numbers, but it's solid. That, In my opinion, like I just look at it as solid. It's in a decent neighborhood, a uh, very well-situated, stable city. And what else would and you Andrew, add I can't. That? Yeah, no, that's spot on, Andrew. Like, that's exactly the way I look at it for investors as well. I'd say you're definitely looking at this as a commodity, gold, mm-hmm. silver, something like that. The neighborhood is well, I want to know. It actually is still a regentifying neighborhood. It's not completely stabilized. So mm-hmm. you have value in that as well. Yeah, um, you're saying you know, as, the, as the neighborhood comes along, it's going to push rents in that neighborhood up. There's right. stuff that's not captured on that spreadsheet. Exactly, exactly. And then my last thing, going back to my first point, which was, so Andrew, if you took unit number two and paid 2,500 bucks a month for that unit, but you still have a property that's cash flowing, carrying itself. I don't know mm-hmm. about you, but I looked at other houses on that street and the mortgages were closer to 6,000, 7,000 a month. Right. Not, so you're saying if you want to live in that not, neighborhood, uh, yeah. Not 2,500 a mm-hmm. month or even, you know, subtract 300 from that. So let's call it, you know, 22. Yeah. Um, again, I think it's a really good example for someone who's looking to do more of a luxury house hack. Mm-hmm. Um, it's not going to get you as far ahead as your typical duplex conversion on the mountain would do. But if you're looking for that you know, high living lifestyle on the water, it's a great example for a house hack that's a little bit higher end. Interesting take. Yeah, house hack, I think it's a potential. Like I said, I still do think it's more of that investor they wanted to you know, kind of diversify. They'd be the type that would, they're just looking for real estate, quote unquote, gold. Something that's stable, holds its value. And I think that it works for that play. Big takeaway here, and it's also news is municipalities crack down on Airbnb. So this would have been a prime candidate for that. I think it would have done a lot more. But if that's your plan A, no matter who you are, no matter what city you're looking at, you got to have a plan B. And really, I think that this episode iterates that, hey, you have a plan B, it might not be as sexy, but it can still work. So, all right, Jake, if people want to find out the type of off-market deals you have access to, we've covered some really cool ones, even potentially this one, if it's something that tweaks their interest, how do they find out about it? As always, Andrew, we have a link below. Anybody who's interested in this or product like this or product completely different than this, but just want to say, hey, Jake, do you have anything else off-market? Hey, Andrew, can you help me run some numbers on this? Please reach out. There's a link down there. You'll get a call from my assistant, Shannon. From there, we can set up a call, set up a meeting in person. I love food. Let's go have lunch. So that's what that link's going to do for you guys. And we can talk about anything we've previously reviewed or will be reviewing in the future as well. So go sign up and you'll definitely be at first access to these deals. Yeah. An interesting example of that, like that people just seem to love is the car wash. I don't think we knew that. We knew we liked it. And then I know you got a whole bunch of inquiries about that one, which is pretty cool. So anyways, yeah, now, and, and here's the thing, Andrew. So now yeah. we're looking for car washes, right? Like <laughs> you got all not, these car so, wash buyers. 
<laughs> well, we had two, three people yeah. call in, you know, maybe <laughs> four people call in saying, Hey, I'm really interested in that car wash. Great. So here, we're going to do this deal. But then we still got four other people. So now I have my team and myself, we're actually door knocking. We're looking for these off market car washes for these buyers. So again, even if you know, you're watching the show weekly and nothing's tickled your fancy yet, we can also have that conversation and go find something for you. So anyways, reach out no matter what, and let's go from there. Very cool. All right, everyone, if you made it this far, we love you for it. Hit the likes subscribe, notification bell, show us some love. Let us know what types of properties you want us to cover. If something's on your mind right now, what type of real estate are you looking for in this market? We want to hear about it. So thanks for that. We'll see you next week.